Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm joined today by Mr. Jan Tomvinsky, the head of the EU's delegation to Ukraine. Mr. Tomvinsky. Good morning. Many thanks for, for joining us. Good morning. Perhaps to start with, um, you could just give us your assessment of Ukraine's progress so far on its, uh, on its reform path, especially over the last couple of years since we've had this Euromaidan revolution. So the country is uh, something that is never achieved. Uh, so you have to uh, adjust the country to the needs of tomorrow. And for the past year and a half, uh, we have uh, a huge uh, number of different reforms engaged uh, because uh, it's this need and the call of the people of Ukraine to make the country responding to uh, its potential and to the needs of people. The four reforms uh, are in every sector. We start with uh, this uh, main element of the system, the constitution, they were especially changes with regard to the decentralization of uh, the power. So this devolution of power to the local self-governments and other structures. And the other part, judiciary. The both are now in the parliament, uh, but my understanding is that uh, mentally people already factored in uh, what is in this uh, proposals. Uh, and especially with regard to the decentralization, the country starts already operating in the new mood. This uh, devolution of power is one of the macro reforms that may shape the new future of the country. This is about how to unleash the potential of Ukrainian regions and how to break this ineffectiveness of a country that is centrally uh, governed from the top down to the bottom. Therefore, this is one of these macro changes. And this is obviously, you see this as a, as a positive, a positive step. This is, I guess, is a very positive step and uh, the EU uh, is uh, very much engaged in supporting in these uh, changes uh, uh, and uh, in uh, uh, giving advice and coaching to people who are going to work under new rules because you need to create also an institutional and administrative culture of how to work under new rules as well financial assistance to the newly created uh, combined communes and uh, locally elected people in order to show to the population that something is changes. The administrative centers, centers of administrative services can also be built with some assistance from the European money as well uh, as uh, uh, some facilities uh, for administration. What sort of numbers are we talking about, if you, if you can say, uh, the sort of the financial flows that we're looking at from the European Union to Ukraine? There are different uh, pockets uh, or different titles for the European money that flows to, to Ukraine. For this specific uh, uh, sector, we are talking uh, of about uh, 150 million uh, combined by, from two uh, sources. One is uh, the Regional Development Fund that is governed uh, by the Ministry of regional development in Ukraine with our assistance and the other is an EU program, EU lead. This is about uh, local empowerment, uh, uh, democratization and development. And so that's, that's, that's funds which are allocated for this administrative reforms, this uh, macro reform. This is for this macro, one of these macro reforms. The other one that is not yet completed, but I hope we will uh, engage in it, it's the assistance to the uh, change of how the administration works, to make uh, uh, this administration more purpose and result-oriented and not only process-oriented. This is uh, for everyone who knows Ukraine well. Uh, we all know that uh, process stands uh, very often uh, and, uh, instead of results. So to help this administration to operate uh, rather uh, in a result-oriented uh, way. Reduce the bureaucracy. Perhaps. Reduce the bureaucracy, reduce the number of regulation, 
part of this engagement is also how to limit the scope uh, and space for corruption. The less uh, you depend on the administration, the uh, lower mm, the threat of uh, uh, corrupting people because of a need to get some administrative decision is. Yep. Therefore, we wish to create the space for free people, people who depend on law and not on other people's wish. Absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, obviously, of course, corruption is, is a key word here, which um, comes up again and again as you know, the main focus of, of reform here. Um, on, on that note, I, I read recently that Ukraine has uh, set up, or the government says it's set up a, a new mechanism by which you can register a business in Ukraine in uh, one day. And this seems like one example of where they're trying to cut down on the bureaucracy and have things uh, move more, more quickly. Um, on that economic side, it seems it's also a crucial part of Ukraine's development, especially as we have the uh, free trade agreement coming into effect um, from next year with Europe. Um, you and your, your office, your organization, must be also focused on growing small, medium-sized businesses here, I, I presume. This is one of uh, the objectives of all the process, uh, to change the structure down from monopolies to uh, creating a level playing field for small and uh, medium-sized businesses. It all requires time. You've mentioned this uh, decision about a uh, possibility to register uh, a business within one day. But uh, from registering a business and uh, the operation, until the operation of a business, it still requires some time. So we will need to have a bit of time in order to uh, judge about effectiveness uh, of all uh, these measures taken uh, by the government. Uh, Ukraine is in a situation where time is probably the least available commodity and uh, uh, we know as well from other countries that reforms need time, environment, political will and continuity that business will engage if the business see the perspective uh, and the purpose uh, for further extension. And when you say that, that time is, is our most scarce commodity right now, do you mean in the sense that for the Ukrainian people they need to see progress more quickly? Do you mean because of the geopolitical pressures, for example, from Russia? Why, why are we so pressed for time here in Ukraine? Especially because of people. Uh, the sacrifice of people over past years uh, was enormous. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the management of short-term success stories is an element that helps us to justify long-term objective. Therefore, we need to uh, uh, create a space in which people do see that uh, uh, new rules start operating and start bringing fruits. Uh, this will then justify the need to adjust to new rules. All reforms is about uh, forcing people to uh, adjust to new rules. Uh, do you th have, have you been successful, do you think, in, in getting this information to the Ukrainian people? Do they feel these reforms? Do they know that there is work going on? For the time being, I'm uh, not uh, very optimistic or very positive about uh, judging over this uh, result of the reforms. Uh, there are so many uh, different uh, sectors uh, under reconstruction that people don't see eventually uh, uh, progresses. In the business, we see now that more and more business start adjusting to new rules. This is not only that we will have this deep and comprehensive free trade area, area starting uh, from January 1st, uh, 16, but Ukraine already may take profit of the opening of the European market, the autonomous uh, trade measures introduced by European Union in April 2015 were here in order to help Ukrainian business to boost. We've observed that Ukrainian business was not prepared to do it. Also, it needs as well uh, some assistance from state structure. You need ability to certify goods and uh, to make these goods uh, available on the European market. This is not only that you... I have something fantastic and uh, everyone should 
buy it. No, this is about getting in a very competitive market and uh, you need to have quality, safety of your products and you have to compete with others, uh, with everything that is a part of business strategy. strategy. Okay, well, Mr. Tombinski, I'm afraid that's where we'll have to leave it because we are out of time. But thank you very, very much for coming in to speak with us. Thank you very much and thank you for your interest and uh, all the best wishes to 2016. Same for thank you, you as well. You've been watching Viewpoint. I've been joined by Mr. Jan Tombinski, the head of the EU delegation to Ukraine. That's all we have time for. Do join us again next time.